to my channel. So today I am here with my first ever three looks, one palette video. Before I start, two things. First of all, my hair got rained on earlier and we are looking a little bit fucking crazy and we're, we're gonna pretend that we don't notice because this is not a hair channel. This is a makeup channel. I, this is inconsequential, okay? And also, I would like to say that Props to people who do three looks, one palette all the time. Uh, people like Atlee and Tanya Waller. Wow, you guys, you do this a lot and it's a lot of work. Uh, I'll probably continue doing this in the future because it was fun. And I think it's a really good way to review a palette for people is more thorough for sure. But God damn, is it a lot of work. So just, just shout out to all your favorite YouTubers who do three looks, one palette all the time, okay? The collection is a travel themed collection. So we have the Born, oh, let me open it up, hello. We have the Born to Run palette. We have three lipsticks. One of the lipsticks is downstairs in my purse. Sorry about that. We have three eyeliners from the 24 seven liner pencil collection and a miniature travel size version of the all nighter setting spray. So I will timestamp everything that we are going to do today down below in the description but we're going to do all three looks i'll timestamp each one and then when i'm finished i will give you my assessment of all the products in the collection let you know what i think what's worth buying what might not be etc etc and i really do think that this three looks one palette format is a really good way to do a review so uh, i may continue doing it this way going forward if you guys want to keep seeing three looks, one palette instead of a regular review, please let me know in a comment down below and my ass will keep doing it. The Born to Run palette itself is $49. The Vice lipsticks are the standard price for Urban Decay lipsticks, which is $18. And the 27, and the 24 seven glide on eye pencils are $21 each, which is also the standard price for their eye pencils. All these products are available now. They are available at Sephora, Ulta, Select Macy stores, Urban Decay stores, which I have never been to an Urban Decay store, but I would love to go to one, or online at Sephora.com, Ulta.com, Macy's.com, and UrbanDecay.com. Again, that will all be listed below if you need to know where to get the shit. We've got three whole looks to do today, so I'm gonna shut my trap and get right into the first look. For the first look, I'm gonna go into the crease with a more warm toned color. This is kind of a coral matte shade called Still Shot. I'm gonna work that through the crease on a BH number no. five brush. Next, I'm gonna go into this matte berry shade called Hell Ride. And I'm gonna pack that onto the outer corner and the inner corner using a smaller brush. This is a Real Techniques brush. And I'm also gonna bring that into the crease and blend that with that coral shade just a bit. I want to create a nice bright spot in the center of the eyes for like a brighter magenta color to stick to and then highlight the very center of that. So I'm going to put a cream white base down. I'm going to use white out from the Kat Von D Super Brows. You can use pretty much any white base that you want to though. You could use a white eyeliner. You could use a white like jumbo milk pencil from NYX. You could also use a very light concealer. I'm just gonna pop that right in the center and then blend it out into the surrounding colors. On a similar flat brush like we used before, this is just like the other end of an Anastasia brush that comes with their palettes. I'm gonna pick up the color Wild Heart and I'm going to place that on the edge of where we place that white, just leaving the very center open. And for the very center, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Breakaway and I'm gonna wet that with some Fix Plus. I feel like the center of the lids could use a little bit more fun right now. So I'm gonna pick up an Urban Decay product that's not part of this collection, but it is a staple and a favorite. And if you don't have it in your collection, I highly recommend this. This is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner. This is the shade Midnight Cowboy. I'm gonna pop that right in the center over the more whitish portion and bring that up onto the lid. For the underneath portion of the eye, I wanna smoke that out with like a deep orange sort of a shade. So I'm gonna go back into the shade Still Shot and I am going to start smoking out the lower lash line with that.
Next, I'm going to dip into the shade Baja, and I'm going to place that closer to the lash line on the underneath portion on a pencil brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the color Jet, and I'm going to pack that just on the outer corner and the inner corner to deepen up the shape that you create when you make one of these little spotlight eyes. Um, I really like the Hellride shade because it's a really beautiful berry, but it's not quite dark enough on its own to be what I need it to be for my life and my soul. And for the lower lash line, I'm going to use one of the 24-7 pencil shades from this collection. This is Lucky, which is like a bright, shiny, deep copper color. It's actually been one of my favorite waterline pencils in general lately. I have another one from before I got this collection and it's like worn down to like a half of a stick now because I've been using it so much. I've also used it on my lips and it's beautiful on the lips. For the lip, I'm gonna keep it a little bit more with like the neutral mauve purple tones. So I'm going to use the color 66, but I kind of wanna warm that up and I also definitely need a liner. So I'm going to use a little bit of the MAC lip liner in the color Beat, and then I'm gonna fill the center in with 66. And that's the first look. I'm not sure why I have like a lost hair today, but for the second look today, I, I'm i gonna be real honest with you. I already started this look one time, fucked it all the way up and, and wiped it off and started over. So if you notice that I have like a little green tinge here, it's because, it's because I do, I done goofed. My plan is like a greeny, tealy, smoky, dark eye. That was a terrible description, but it's what I'm going for. Will I achieve it? I don't know. Historically, I already tried it once and I sucked at it, so maybe, maybe not. But I'm gonna go in first with the color Riff and I'm gonna pick that up on a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush and I'm gonna pop that through my crease and I'm a little worried that it's too dark, but we're going for a real dark smoky eye anyway, so as long as I don't put it too high up, I think we'll be all right. Okay, we're already off to a much better start than the first try. Wow. Last time, I wound up getting too much of this color all over. Like, it went up above my blend for some reason. It's almost like awkward fallout, if that makes sense. I don't know if the, uh, the laws of physics ceased to exist momentarily. We're going to try not to do that this time by using a smaller brush and seeing if we don't make a whole mess. I'm gonna pick that up on this small Real Techniques brush and I'm gonna wet that with Fix Plus and I'm going to carefully place that across my lid. I'm going to pick up this MAC 220S brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that color and wet it again because I want to make sure that I get all the way up into the crease and the corner, but because this color seems to tend to get a little messy, I'm going to do it very carefully and cautiously because uh, quite frankly, a bitch doesn't want to shower again. I'm picking up a little bit more of Riff on a smaller brush and I'm just going to blend that together in the crease. Next I'm going to pick up a little bit of Jet on a MAC 219S pencil brush. I'm going to pack that on the outer portion and the inner portion and blend it into the crease a little bit too. Okay, now that we've got nice dark, bluey, greeny base, I'm gonna go into some of this color Big Sky on the corner here, and I'm gonna use that same flat MAC brush, and I'm gonna dip it into that and wet that shit again. This one's lighter and a lot more shimmery and metallic, so I'm hoping it gives us like a little, little, little something in the center, you know what I mean? 
This technique is actually, oh yeah, oh that was, that was what I wanted it to be. This technique is actually super similar to the first look, except sort of toned down. Um, you know, the lighter on the center, darkening up the outer corners to create some shape and some depth. But the results, quite different. I put a little extra powder underneath my eyes because we were working with very dark colors and the fallout with these shades so far is not bad at all. However, they're very dark. Eh, I'm just trying to avoid a mess. I am going to go through the waterline with the shade Overdrive, which is a very similar color to what we use on the lids. I'm going to go back into Riff on a MAC 217S brush and I am going to bring that down pretty low. Pretty low. Like, like I'm gonna make myself uncomfortable with how low I'm bringing this color, but later I'm gonna be glad that I did it. I think that like something that people tend to do is they're like, I want a smoky eye, but they're afraid to like really smoke it out. And then they wonder why it doesn't really look like the way it does on somebody they see with a smoky eye. And uh, that is usually the difference. So my advice, if you are doing smoky eyes and you are not feeling like they look sultry and smoky enough, Put on your big kid pants and, and bring that shit lower down. You probably are gonna like it better than you think. All right, next I'm gonna pick up this same pencil brush from earlier and go back into Jet, which is the black shade here. This is also a pencil brush, but it's a little bit more diffused and round, so I like it better for my inner corners. I'm also gonna go back into Big Sky again, this time on a Morphe E18 brush. This is also a pencil brush. Why am I not focused? Hello? This is also a pencil brush, but it's a little bit more diffused and round, so I like it better for my inner corners. I'm just popping a little bit of that on the inner corner to brighten it up and give it a little bit of dimension, but also to continue that like kind of greeny, oceany sort of a color we've got going on because we didn't bring any of that onto the bottom. So it just kind of, kind of connects everything a little bit better. All right, I just cleaned up underneath my eyes and popped on the House of Lashes Juliet Lash, which you guys probably noticed by now are among my favorites because I use them all the goddamn time. Now, I could see this look looking so good with like just a nude glossy lip. I think it would look absolutely beautiful. And if I do recreate it, which I might because I am enjoying the way this looks on the lid right now, I probably will wear it that way. But for the sake of this collection, because I want to use everything in it to show you guys, I am going to pair this with the Urban Decay Vice lipstick in the color Marfa, which sounds like you're pronouncing Martha wrong, but it's not. It's like after the town Marfa, Texas, because Route 66. Mm -hmm. And because it's a nice deep shade, I'm just gonna go right in with it. I'm not certain how I feel about this lipstick, to be entirely honest. It's a pretty color, but it's a little more sheer than I would like it to be. I'm gonna let it ride and see if it grows on me. I like the shade though. I think the shade is very pretty. And I like the way it looks with the turquoise shade. So there's that. And that's the second look done. All right, and last but not least, we're doing a big old smoky wing. I'm gonna start by going into the color Punk and I'm going to be using my favorite brush, her Smoky Winged Liner. I've used this before, but if you guys have not seen me use it before, this is the MAC 268S brush. It's basically like a big fat angled brush. And basically I'm just going to start stamping out the shape of a wing with that brush, making sure I taper it toward the end. I'm just gonna blend out the edges of that wing with a clean brush. I 
originally wanted to keep the lid very bare, but the more I'm looking at it, the more I think my crease area needs just a little bit of something. So I am going to pick up the color Weekender again, and I am going to put that on a Sigma E38 diffused crease brush. This is the same brush I used earlier, just a clean one. And I'm just gonna place that around my general crease area that sounds like a totally different thing than it is. All right, next I'm gonna use a little bit of this color Ignite here, which is like a coppery bronze shade. And I'm going to pick that up on a, an also fairly large angle brush, but smaller than the one we were just using. This one is from Real Techniques. And I'm gonna pick up some of that shade on the angle brush and wet that with Fix Plus, and then use that to continue the liner shape along the lash line. Where did my Fix Plus go? What the fuck? I found it was on the floor. To blend that more seamlessly into the dark brown, I'm going to use a little bit of the color Accelerate, and I'm going to pick that up on the same big MAC angle brush. I'm going to clean off my big fat angle brush on my color switch sponge, and I'm going to go back into the color Punk, which is the dark brown that we started with, and I'm just going to start pressing that underneath my eye to continue the smoky wing to the underside of the eyeball. And for the waterline, I'm going to use the last 24-7 pencil in this collection. It's called Double Life. Although most of my waterline is covered in eyeshadow already anyway. I'm going to use a little bit of the color Blaze to brighten up the inner corner. And I'm going to use that wet because I knew I was going to use it wet. I'm doing that with a BH number 7 brush. This color is pretty cool because it looks like it's going to be just like a champagne shade in the pen, but it actually has like sort of like a pink shift to it. I think it's very pretty when you apply it. I like it more than I thought it was going to. And I popped on the House of Lashes Juliet lashes again. And at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, wow, Nicole, you must have like an entire wardrobe of House of Lashes Juliet. No, no, I don't. I actually just keep wearing the same ones over and over again, like some sort of an eyelash hobo. I think this is gonna pair beautifully with a red lip, which works out really well because the last lipstick in this collection is also a red lip. It's a metalized red though. This shade is called Ready and it has a red base with a gold metallic finish. I definitely think after using the last one though that I like these better with a lip liner. So I'm going to pair that with my favorite reddish pink lip liner from Kat Von D. This is called Por Vida. I'm gonna do that over most of the lip and then fill it in with the red. And this is the third look. So after doing three looks with this palette, I have to say that I think for what Urban Decay was going for, with this being like your go-to travel palette, which is actually, now that I think about it, really hilarious because uh, if you ever watch my palette reviews, literally every time I do a palette review, I'm like, but would I travel with it? <laughs> but I have to say that I think they nailed it. As far as your go-to palette that you may want to travel with, I can't think of a palette that I would rather take with me than this one at this point. Formula-wise, performance-wise, it is exactly what you would expect from Urban Decay. So if you are a fan of the recent iterations of the Naked Palette, uh, the Naked Heat, Naked Petite Heat, uh, even the Kristen Leanne palette, those last bunch of palettes have all been very similar in formula and they're very similar to this as well, which personally I find to be a big improvement over the quality of the original Naked palettes, as in Naked 1, 2, and 3. I find that everything is the right amount of pigment. It's not overly pigmented. It's not under pigmented. It's not hard to blend. The shimmers are very creamy and you can absolutely use them without wetting your brush. I do prefer to wet my brush with most of them, but you don't really need to. It's just that if you wanna get like a really, really intense shine from the more metallic or satin or shimmery finish ones, Wetting is always gonna help a little bit, but honestly, you could use them without it. The assortment of colors, I think for like 99% of people, 
you're gonna find everything you need to go on a trip even if you are going to beat your face to the 10th degree every day of the trip you will probably be able to do it with this palette and not really need anything else oh my god my hair though oh no so if you're somebody who really, really goes for bright, intense colors all the time, maybe this will be your go-to travel palette. But for like the majority of people, I think it will be. The packaging also lends itself really well to bringing with you for travel. It's sleek. It's as small as it can possibly be to fit the number of shades inside of it. These shades are arranged in a way that makes sense to me. So it makes me want to do looks with it. And I find that there's a good assortment. So like there's enough warm tones, enough cool tones, enough pops of color, but not so many that they overtake the palette. I just think it's really perfectly well thought out for what they were going for. As far as the three lipsticks, I really like the color 66. I think it's a really nice mauve nude and it sits really, really comfortably on the lips. Most of the Urban Decay Comfort Mattes really wear very nicely. Um, I did like it with a liner. I tried it without the liner after like reapplying during the day and I really, really preferred it with a liner, but it looked beautiful. It was very comfortable and it wore really gracefully. It wasn't like, oh, chunky or whatever you know how they can get sometimes the second color marfa the more purple one um i found this color to be a little on the patchy shot shied the a little on the patchy side it was like kind of more sheer than i was expecting it to be i liked the way it looked though the finish was pretty i just wish that it covered a little bit more evenly over the lip um, that being said, I do think that it would be really, really nice over a similarly colored lip liner. So I don't not like it. I just think that you should be aware that it might not be something that you would use completely on its own. The three eyeliner pencils, um, I'm not sure about two of them, but I know at least one Lucky is something that already exists in the Urban Decay collection. All three of them are great. The Urban Decay 24-7 liner pencils are great. If you like the colors of those, you will like them personally. My favorite of those three is Lucky. Lucky has been one of my go-to waterline pencils for quite a while now, just for like, just daily makeup where I needed to look like a little something, little, little, a little flit of something fun. So nothing like amazing to write home about there, but if you like those colors and you like Urban Decay pencils, you are going to like them. Overall, this collection is definitely a hit for me. Big thumbs up. If I had to pick something, I'm 100%, 100%, no contest, going with the eyeshadow palette. I think this eyeshadow palette is going to be one of those like easy staple go-tos to recommend to people. Like if somebody was like, hey, I have no eyeshadow and I need something good, that's gonna cover all my bases, what do we need? I would probably tell them this. And the other one that's kind of like a secondary one that I would pick out of this collection if I was like going out to like only buy one thing, the miniature version of the Urban Decay setting spray. Urban Decay setting spray, I'm sure most of you have tried it by now. It's probably the best setting spray on the market. I swear by it. If I need my makeup to stay on all day, it is what I'm going for. So to have a travel size version of it is very, very convenient. I'm really, really, really glad that they came out with that. I think that's all I have to say for this collection. I don't really think that I have any more information to give you guys. If there are any questions that I didn't answer, uh, feel free to check the info box because I will be putting all of the information that Urban Decay gave me in the description so you guys have it. And if there's anything that that doesn't answer, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll do my best to either find out or just let you know because I forgot to say it. I think that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. As always, please, 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 please do not forget to give this video a like if you don't mind because that really helps me out and I would super appreciate it. And also, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I would love to have you stick around for future videos. I think that we're gonna have a good time together. I think we're gonna be best friends. Also, go ahead and feel free to follow me on other social media if you think that maybe you're going to miss me between videos because I update my Instagram stories pretty much every day. Like if I don't update my Instagram stories, I usually get one or two DMs like, hey, are you dead? And I'm like, nah, I'm just tired. So I'm on there a lot. <laughs> I also post a lot of makeup looks on Instagram. I do some more like uh, editorial type stuff on there and other things like lip art that are a little bit more out of the box. So if you're into that kind of thing, come find me over there to see that as well. That's all I got for you for now. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see your butt in the next one.